In this video, I will cover what an ISA is, break down the four types of ISAs, show you the difference between having an ISA and not having one, who is eligible to have an ISA, and how to open an ISA. Hi, if you're new, welcome. My name is Karen. I am a chartered accountant and entrepreneur based in the UK. I am on a financial freedom journey and I am passionate about helping you with weekly videos that cover tips and strategies on personal finance and wealth creation. Let's start by explaining what an ISA is. This is an individual savings account, which is a tax wrapper to allow you to earn interest, dividends and or capital gains from your investments tax free. For the 2020 to 2021 tax year, the ISA allowance is 20,000. So that means from 6 April 2020 to 5 April 2021, you can save or invest up to 20,000 pounds in an ISA. And whatever you earn from that is tax free. Be aware, however, that if you don't use your allowance by the 5th of April 2021, you will lose it forever. Your ISAs will not close when the tax year finishes. So as long as you keep that money in the ISA, it will continue to be tax free. Because this is an individual savings account, it means it applies to you only and you cannot share one. So you can't share it with anyone else. And you can't hold it on behalf of someone else. There are four types of ISAs and we will go through them each. Firstly, cash ISAs. These are savings accounts that you earn interest on. These are the less risky and more liquid of the ISAs as you tend to have easy access to your money. Lifetime ISAs. These are created to help people to save towards their first home or for retirement. You can save up to a maximum of 4,000 a year till the age of 50 and the government will give you a bonus of 25% which is a thousand max per year. Then we go on to the innovative finance ISAs. This is for peer-to-peer -peer lending which are loans that you give to other people or businesses without having to go through the bank. Last, we have the stocks and shares ISAs, which include investments in government and corporate bonds, shares, unit trusts, and investment funds. So all those fall into stocks and shares ISAs. If you're not sure what bonds, shares, or funds are, you can check out the video above for an easy to understand explanation. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions on the cash, lifetime or innovative ISA and I can respond to these possibly in another video. So let's compare the difference between having an ISA and not having one. So we will look at the different forms of income that you can get from your investments, namely being interest, dividend, and capital gains. We will look at the different impact for firstly, a basic tax rate payer who pays 20%, a high tax rate payer, 40%, and an additional tax rate payer, which is 45%. When it comes to interest, a basic tax rate payer has a tax-free allowance of a thousand pounds. So they're not taxed on interest of up to a thousand. A higher rate taxpayer is not taxed up to 500 pounds and an additional tax rate payer has no allowance. For dividends, everyone has a tax-free allowance of 2,000. After that, anything above the 2,000 you pay tax. So for example, a basic tax rate payer will have to pay 7.5% on any dividends above 2000. A higher rate taxpayer will pay 32.5% and an additional tax rate payer 38.1%. So you can see there that the higher you are in the tax bands, the more you'll have to pay in tax. 
Then finally, we have capital gains. Everyone has a tax-free allowance of £12,300. After that, a basic tax rate has tax rate payer pays 10%. Higher rate taxpayer pays 20%. And an additional tax rate payer pays 20% as well. Therefore, it's a no-brainer if you know or anticipate that you will earn more than the above allowances. If you will earn less, it may still be a good idea to invest through an ISA as share prices, for example, increase over time. So I strongly encourage you to make your investments through an ISA so that you can earn the maximum amount from your investments. Not doing this would be literally throwing money away. You can have your money in one type of ISA. So for example, cash ISA alone or a lifetime ISA alone. Or you can mix and match between the different types. So as an example, you can have a thousand in a cash ISA, 10,000 in a stocks and shares ISA, 5,000 in an innovative finance ISA, and 4,000 in a lifetime ISA, as long as it is less than or adds up to the 20,000 allowance in a tax year. Who can open an ISA, you ask? Well, let me tell you. So for a cash ISA, you need to be 16 or older. For a lifetime ISA, you should be 18 or older, but not more than 40 years old. And for a stocks and shares or innovative finance ISA, you must be 18 years or older. For all the ISAs, you must be a resident of the United Kingdom. Click the thumbs up if you meet the above criteria. If you're too young, your parents or guardians can open a junior ISA, which I will cover in another video. How to open an ISA. You've got everything ready and you're eager to start. What do you do? So depending on the type of ISA, you can open one through, for example, a bank, building society, stockbroker, peer-to-peer -peer lending service or other financial institution. The cheapest way, however, is usually through their website, which is called a platform. So for the stocks and shares ISA, you need to find a platform first. For example, there is AJ Bell, Vanguard, Hargreaves Lansdowne or Fidelity. And then you decide what type of investment you want. So for example, maybe you want to invest in a mutual fund or an index fund. There are usually two charges or fees that, are, that you might have to pay. So this would be the platform charge and the fund manager charge, which is the fee for them managing your investment. You need to shop around, use comparison sites so you can find a platform with the lowest charges so you can maximize on your return. During the tax year, you can transfer your money between different ISAs. For example, from a cash ISA to a stocks and shares ISA. Or you can transfer the same type of ISA to a different provider. But remember, when you transfer, you must transfer all of it because you cannot have the same type of ISA with two different providers. For example, you can't have a stocks and shares ISA with both Vanguard and AJ Bell. Contact your provider before making any withdrawals so that you do not lose out on any tax benefits and so that you understand what charges you might be charged. You are allowed to take out money from your ISA and to put it back as you wish. However, do check with your provider first in case they charge you for this. With a lifetime ISA, if you take out your money for any other purpose than buying your first house or for retirement, the government charges you 25%, so you have to be sure before inv investing in this type of ISA. If you leave the UK to live somewhere else, you can keep your ISA, and you will continue to receive the tax relief on your savings and investments, but you won't be able to continue making contributions to that account. Let me know in the comments if you have more questions. 
If you found this useful, consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss any of my next videos. Until next time, keep working on your goals. Thank you.